Welcome back to the Moon Challenge. I hope you'll be joining us to look at the moon every day all through this month. I am Samir Dhurde and I want to remind you that we are doing this in a stay home, stay safe kind of a situation. So please make sure there is no breaking of say, social distancing while you do this challenge. So now join me in understanding what happened on day one of this challenge. Well, day one was yesterday. We had an introductions episode yesterday called day zero, but we are going to discuss yesterday's sighting today. In the series to follow, we will be discussing the previous day's uh, observations on the present day. So please don't get confused about this. Of course, yesterday we couldn't have seen anything because it was a new moon or so we could call it a no moon day. However, a new moon is also very important and I thought we should discuss something about this. How does a new moon happen? It is more because the moon and the sun come in kind of a straight line in the sky. They are very close together. Now, I don't want to say that their distances change and they come together in the sky. It's not like that. They apparently line up in their own orbits. So, uh, as seen from the Earth, the Moon and the Sun are in the same uh, area in the sky. The distance between them is very less in terms of degrees. Now, this is something we need to understand a bit. Uh, for that, let me uh, show you uh, this slide. Actually, we have a very good measure of angles right in our hands. All right. This is something we have uh, been using as amateur astronomers for a long time. It's a very empirical measure. And in this, if you want to see how many degrees something spans in the sky, we just use the fingers or other parts of our hand. Just note that the sky, let's say a line drawn from the east to the west, exactly through the top of your head is about 180 degrees. And now in that, if you kind of point out your little finger at an arm's length, see, I'm extending my hand completely and at an arm's length, my little finger would cover about one degree in the sky. Similarly, if I uh, put out three of my fingers, the width of these would be approximately equal to five degrees, but not here at an arm's length. This is all this is at an arm's length. Uh, a knuckle would uh, refer to 10 degrees. 15 degrees would be the rock on side, the ends of my two fingers here till here. And a 25 degree span could be done with this kind of a sign, okay, at an arm's length. Now that you have the measuring scale for measuring angles in the sky, if you really want to find out the distance between the sun and the moon on a new moon day, I will tell you it will not be much more than five degrees, not more than these three fingers stretched out in the sky at an arm's length. You'd be surprised by this. You'd say, oh, the sun and the moon look so big in the sky. How can they be uh, within that small area and still not, you know, overlap each other? Actually, they are very small in the sky. We will actually do a exercise later uh, to find out their angular distance. But let me tell you now, they are about half a degree in width. Both of them. That's a big coincidence. I will tell you, the size of the sun and the moon in the sky is approximately equal. Half a degree. Now you can compare them in this picture that I'm showing here, in which uh, you can see both the uh, sun and the moon, the pictures of these not taken together on a new moon day, this is not possible, but they are actually taken on separate days uh, with the same kind of camera and lens setting. They show you how similar they are in the size. And also there happens to be a tiny plane flying over both of them that makes the picture very interesting uh, in fact. So these two being the same size, uh, if they come together in a straight line with each other, 
they cause something called an eclipse. This is a very uh, special phenomena and we are going to talk about that in the next few minutes. But of course, let me tell you a tidbit. Do you know why these are at the same size in the sky? Apparent angular size in the sky? That is because the sun happens to be 400 times bigger than the moon and it also happens to lie at a distance which is 400 times the distance between the moon and the earth. That is the coincidence, my friends. And it leads us to these beautiful happenings called total solar eclipses. If the moon was quite far from us, it would never be able to cover the sun like it has done in this beautiful anima animated sequence of a total solar eclipse by Mr. Eclipse, Fred Espinock. In this, you can see this dark shadow of the moon slowly uh, creeping over the face of the sun and then hiding it completely. You'll notice that they are approximately the same size at the peak of the eclipse, which is called totality. There, the corona is, uh, is only seen during total solar eclipses. And I want to point out to you that this would probably not be possible if the moon was farther away. Slightly bit, slight bit farther and it would give us what is called an annular eclipse and we would never see the sun completely blocked out. So thankfully for this coincidence and also for the, uh, for the fact that they are there in, this, in the same area in the sky, uh, we get solar eclipses, these beautiful events. However, we don't get solar eclipses every single month. Well, that should happen, right? Because uh, on noon, they are in the same area in the sky. But let me tell you, if uh, you look at this picture in which the sun's rays are coming from far off and the moon being uh, here, it casts a shadow on the earth. If it is in the straight line with the earth and the sun. However, if you, are, you do not happen to be in this area of uh, the shadow, you will not see an eclipse. This is the catch. Now, the moon's orbit is actually tilted with respect to the Earth's orbital plane. If this is the Earth's orbital plane, the moon is sometimes here in a straight line, giving us the uh, pleasure of an eclipse. But sometimes, when suppose it's not in this plane, but it's orbiting somewhere here, above the uh, Earth-Sun plane, or below the Earth Sun plane, then if it is here or here, the shadow of the moon would not cover any part of the Earth and we would not have eclipses. Therefore, this is the reason why we don't have eclipses, solar eclipses, on every new moon day. This is a better picture to explain the same, and you can see the, uh, the planes of the uh, Earth moon system and the Earth-Sun system. So this, 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 this are the four positions of the Earth going around the Sun and the plane of the Moon happens to be this. How, you Please mind that the inclination is always in the same direction. So while the Earth moves around the Sun, the Moon keeps orbiting in the same plane all through the month. However, you can see that as the Earth shifts its position, you can find some uh, times of the year when the Moon is not in the same plane as the Earth's Sun plane, and therefore it's slightly lower, although in the same direction as the Sun, and therefore it cannot uh, cast a shadow on the Earth. However, there are times when uh, the planes intersect and you can actually see the shadow uh, coming onto the Earth. So these are the times which are favorable for eclipses and at other times they are not. So we do not have eclipses all the time every month. You'll also note that uh, we do not always have total eclipses. This would be a sequence of a total eclipse in which, as I have told you, the moon covers the sun and slowly shifts over it. Right? However, there are times when the moon may not be exactly in line with the sun, but might be slightly lower, but not so low that its shadow does not uh, fall on the earth. And at that time, what we see is a partial eclipse. So the partial eclipse uh, uh, is seen 
when only part of the moon can cover part of the sun and although they do come almost in line they do not uh, get overlapped uh, on their boundaries and therefore the eclipse is not total. Today is day two and there should be a crescent moon in the sky. I hope you will go out and try to spot this beautiful crescent which will be very low on the western horizon. So you might have to resort to uh, climbing to some height to see it or if you're lucky to have a uh, clear horizon on the west you might be able to see it properly. However, let me also talk about what else is today. Do you know that the Hubble Space Telescope was launched into orbit 30 years ago today? Well, it has been giving us beautiful sights of the universe and so many discoveries have been made out of it. We wish all the best to the telescope and that it continues doing so for many, many more years. Today is also the World Book Day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a few links uh, on the description below in which you can find a list of books about the moon that you could read. Some of them are science fiction books about being on the moon, traveling to the moon. Some of them are actually facts about the moon. A few books of them would also be about how to observe the moon. So please do enjoy the uh, literature related to the moon all throughout this series. I'm going to see you again tomorrow with more details of the moon as it was seen today. So stay with the moon challenge and finish it together with us. Till then, be safe and enjoy nature.